All right, so uh, the usual reminders, this meeting is being recorded. All uh, votes will be taken via roll call and in attendance uh, from the select board is Jane Nevinsmith, myself, David Phil, Joyce Chunglo, John Muscovitz, and Christian Stanley. Um, so first item this evening is the consent agenda. We have warrants AP 2138, AP 2138S, AP 2139S, AP 2139, and that's it. So moved. Second. Right. Motion by Joyce, second by Christian. Any other discussion? All right, roll call vote, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Junkaloo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, public comments. Uh, we're going to limit this to 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes each so that other people may speak. And if you'd like to make a public comment, uh, please try on your camera, wave at us, let us know that you're here. Amy. Hi. Uh, so I did want to uh, have one thing out for public comment. Uh, last select board meeting, I um, after the tri board, I did listen in to the rest of it. There was one item that I um, wanted to bring up and the item was, it had to do with a letter that the select board was going to present um, as part of the town of Hadley. And my understanding is it has to do with the college um, and they're looking to have um, um, some of the um, employees wanna have daycare. I think it started out in South Hadley and the employees um, felt that there, there should be daycare. And yeah, that's great and that's a wonderful benefit. I think that's a great benefit. But my comment to that is that is a employer and that is a separate employer that is not the town of Hadley. Um, my feeling is that that should not be something that the town of Hadley should um, be involved with in any way. Um, my fear is that um, who's to say that that employer should have to do daycare where another employer shouldn't. Um, I don't, next thing you know, that someone could come back and say, hey, since you thought that was such a good idea, why doesn't the town of Hadley become and does child care for us? Um, I don't want, you know, it, 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 that can't, we can't have another line item for that um, as for affordability. Um, so it's just, it, it's one of those things, it's a great thought, but I just don't feel that that's the place for the town to be involved with and to say that they, sh what another employer should do. Um, that that was um, my only comment and it was just something that um, I saw in the last meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you, Amy. Uh, Keyshore, you had something as well? You're muted. Can we unmute? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. I don't know if um, it's regarding the Route 9 expansion. And I know a couple of businesses are kind of having a little trouble regarding um, what they're getting regarding assessed value or what they're getting in return. Um, I'm not sure if Paul is here or not from Exotic Auto, but I know he was having um, a lot of difficulties regarding dealing with DOT. I just wanted to bring that to the town's attention. And um, I'm not sure if there's any future discussion of bringing DOT in and addressing some of these issues before, you know, it turns into something else. So we have uh, Exotic Auto on the agenda for six. So I think he is planning on coming or I hope he is at least. Okay. So uh, can I ask a question, Keyshore? Yeah. On um, how much property are they going to be sitting right in your front window when they come through with the uh, with the new uh, road? So for us, we're not too concerned for the hotel um, yeah. on the street. Um, you know, we the last plans we had for that was for redevelopment, where the building would actually the newer building would be pushed out back. Our biggest issue is that we're going to lose our sign and we have to replace it. But I know um, last I talked which was some time ago. Um, I know the town and the planning board was working with on a case on case basis regarding signage and um, helping 
the business's outlook that. So okay. um, we haven't received anything official from Mass DOT regarding what we're getting from them. So uh -huh. um, I'm guessing it's due to COVID. So we'll see, but I'm not too concerned about us. Okay, thank you. Well, it, you know, obviously we'll talk more about it, but it, it's funny that we're being told by them when they come to the meetings that everything's good. We've got agreements with you know, 95% of the landowners down Route 9, but yet yeah. most, most of these landowners have no idea what's actually going on. Yeah, I agree, David. And unfortunately, a couple meetings ago, he said his last statement before he left the meeting was, we can always take it by eminent domain. Yeah. Really ticked a lot of people off with that statement. Mm -hmm. I wish the state would act a little bit more professional when they deal with all the citizens and Hadley and the businesses along but, with the board. But as we realize, no matter how much, pardon my language, bitching we do to the state and as, ma as, as many times as we go back to them and they're going to do exactly what they want to do. So too bad Hadley. And they've done that right along. This is what they're doing. And, you know, they always they haven't given us many concessions on um, things that they wanted to do um, in, in regards to Route 9. So, um, you know, that's where my state is. And I'm always getting myself into trouble. So I'm going to keep quiet right now. So I don't know why, but I'm going to keep quiet right now. Come on. The meeting just started, Joyce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait until six o'clock. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, OK, so anybody else here for a public comment before we move on? Last last chance if you want to turn your camera on. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul. Yes. Hello, yeah. Uh, my name is Paul, uh, owner of Exotic Auto Repair. Hope all you guys are doing well. Doing yes, well. Paul. We uh, we are uh, we are going under immense uh, stress and pressure, uh, pressure and. I don't know what other words I can use because I had mass DOT approach me a couple of times and, uh, you know, they were, first they were saying, we're going to help you out. Uh, we're going to try to do this for you, do this, do that for you. And now uh, yes. they are saying that uh, we want the place. If you don't get out, we're going to bulldoze your place and get you out of there. Um, so we are, you know, we don't know which, which way to go, where to go, who to ask to help us. Um, you know, to get us some fair, uh, you know, fair conditions. I know they, they are doing their job and, you know, I respect the laws and regulations of the state. So I'm not going to say anything against that, but just to be fair enough uh, to, uh, yes, take the property, but at least be fair with me and help me out to uh, relocate and continuing my business, what I'm doing there for the last seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, where, Paul, where is there? Where are they going to be sitting? Right in your? Are they just want to take your whole piece of property? Yes. Well, they are. They are adding a lane in front of the the, the property, and then they are taking uh, a lane from the East State side. Yeah. And first, first they were like, "Oh, we're going to take uh, the the part of the parking lot." And then let you, uh, you know, decide how you can get the cars in the shop. And then all of a sudden they came back to me. And so we're going to take the whole property. And okay, we'll help you uh, uh, relocate on Route 9. Uh, uh, this year. Okay, well, you know, uh, they said, well, start looking for properties on route. Say again? Uh, your internet connection is, is really oh. not great. Um, how about uh, if you can hang on for just a few minutes, I, we can talk more about this. I just want to get public comments out of the way because yes, sir. we have you on the agenda. Yes. So that way we can spend a little bit more time on this, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right, great. Uh, anybody else here for public comments? Uh, Mr. Baranowski, are you here for public comments? 
But it looks like that was a yes. Can we unmute Mr. Baranowski? Unmute. Where did you get? Okay. Oh, well, new to this technology, right? I'm only 52. Um, <laughs> um, just a comment on the river, uh, the permanent of RVs along the river. Um, we're just learning now as uh, the landowners are learning and the people on the campers are learning to, in the last day or two that conservation committee and um, DEP want to permit under an NOI, they're considering every camper a separate activity. And we're all struggling, all the landowners, as to how parking campers on a land is considered an NOI separate activity at a cost of $165 per camper. So we're looking at some of the landowners are looking at, you know, between all these costs are going up to $1,500 just to put their campers on their land that, that they've been doing for the last 20 years. Are you a Hadley resident or landowner in Hadley? I am one of the people that has campers on one of the properties. But you're not an owner or a resident? No, but there are other people on this call that are. So whose property do you have your camper on? Um, Mark Britton's. Okay. And he's on this call. Okay. Uh, we've got just the uh, permit fees on the agenda for tonight. Um, we'll have a further discussion on that later on this evening um, in, in some more detail. And then I'm sure this will not be the end of the discussion uh, because it sounds like there's some big money involved nice. in, uh, in this process. So um, we'll, we'll certainly talk about it a little bit more. But, um, Excuse me. This is Wendy DeForge. Uh, we own property in Hadley and we're getting the same as Mark Britton and stuff. She's charging us outrageous prices and everything. Who is so, this? Wendy DeForge. <laughs> Lionel the Forge's wife. Okay, and where, where's your property? It's at uh, Three Mitch's Way. Three what? Mitch's Way. Three Mitch's Way. Okay, yeah. down at down at the marina. Yeah, past there. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Hi, Joyce. Yes. Can you hear? This is Johnny Mitch. Mitch Kowski. Sorry. Hi, yes, Joyce. Johnny. Good, how um, are you? Good, sorry, I joined the call late. Um, but I know we're going to discuss this later in the meeting, but mm -hmm. you know, this is something I want to also partake in uh, when we do discuss this as I am a owner to his river, riverfront property. So, mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. All right, Any last call for public comment before we move on. No? All right, uh, is Haley's here. Let's uh, get the veterans tax work off out of the way. Hello. Hey, Haley. Hi. So tell us about the uh, tax work off program for veterans. And, sure. Uh, um, I, I was informed that um, town meeting voted to approve a veteran property tax work off program in 2017 but that the program had not been activated. And since I oversee a program almost exactly like it for seniors, for people over 60 who are homeowners in Hadley, um, I just took on adapting those, those program guidelines and also heavily, just really kind of revising Northampton's um, to suit Hadley people and Hadley Hadley um, veterans of any age um, who are property owners would be eligible for this tax work off program for a $500 abatement on their taxes. Um, and they would be working 37 hours within a calendar year um, until October 31st of this year to, if, if the program goes into effect this year. Um, so it's, and it would be, eligibility would be determined by Steve Connor, who's the veterans agent for North for Northampton. Um, so I would like to propose that you as a select board approve permitting this program to be activated 
and um, understand that there could be up to four, um, uh, four positions held by people, um, which would cost the town $2,000 if people really utilized it. That's the so maximum St outlay. Right, so Steve is also our um, veteran agent. So, I mean, we certainly can work through him. I don't have a problem with that. I think, you know, it's minimal on, on what would be, I mean, that would be my take. And that's what I'm offering is that we would uh, get this program initiated for our veterans. I think it's great. We've offered it to our seniors in town. Uh, let's offer it to the veterans we have also. And so do you, can that's you get a motion. That's a motion. All right, motion. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Like second. All right, second by uh, Jane. All right, and then real quick, how? Do, what makes you eligible for this program? Is there income requirements? What's the-, the, the There are no income requirements and there are no age requirements. You have to have served in the armed services and you have to have a specific kind of discharge paper. Um, and that would be looked at by Stephen Connor, who would determine eligibility. So we don't have to be um, understand that as thoroughly. Although you could ask him for for more guidelines about what makes someone eligible. Um, but as um, as far as we're concerned, um, the town of Hadley is concerned. Um, a veteran of any age who owns property in Hadley could apply for this and they would need to identify some skills and some job experience and select among the jobs that have been defined by department heads. Um, so, it, and it's a, a very simple application that you have a copy of, there's a copy in the, in the board docs. And I've, uh, I think there's plenty of time in the year for, some, for people to take advantage of this if it would be helpful to them. This is great, absolutely. Any further discussion on this? I was just going to, I had a question, but then I answered it uh, myself reading through the documentation. So you're either eligible for this or the senior tax work off program. You can't do both. Can't well, be both I don't know the answer to that. It's, it's said in there that uh, okay, it did. Okay. It was, it was, you could do either or you couldn't do both. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Wes Kevitz? Yes. Thank you. Thank well, you. Haley, thank you for taking this on because obviously it's like you said, it's been since 2017 and this is the first time any action has been taken on it. So I appreciate the work on getting it off the ground. You're welcome. Thanks for voting it. All right. All right, well, thank you. All right, um, that's all set. Let's go back to exotic auto. And Paul, if you're there. Sir. All right, we had you down for six, but I'm sure you don't mind a few minutes early. Oh, absolutely not, sir. Thank right. you. So uh, the story we got from MassDOT was basically they had already come to agreements with, with most everybody on Route 9 everybody's being compensated fairly, everybody's happy. And, you know, obviously that's, that's not the case. So can you, I guess, tell us a little bit about the, about the process. I don't want, you know, private details or anything like that, but did they just make you an offer based on your appraised value or what, what are they trying to give you? Well, uh, you know, they, um, they came in and they, um, they said that we're going to, uh, first, first of all, we're going to help you uh, to, you know, relocate because I'm the only individual on Route 9 that is being chased away, uh, shutting down completely and running out of business. I'm the only one. Uh, other other people, uh, you know, they're taking a little bit of land here and there, but I'm the only one that, you know, has gone completely. So they said that they're going to be helping me to relocate on Route 9 wherever possible uh, we can get a small piece of land or you know, get a shop that is closed or buy a little piece of property that I can, I can move on on Route 9. Being said that, uh, they said they were going to be, be fair, but there is no, uh, uh, no view of being fair because the money that they are uh, 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 offering me 
as an appraised value, with that money, I can't even buy a bond on in Hadley. Forget about buying a, a piece of property uh, to, uh, to, to build a shop on it. And they basically are saying, well, this is a test value on the property and we're going to give you this and that's about it. And the rest is you're on your own. Uh, if you don't get out, you know, we're going to bulldoze the property and, and, and pull you out of there. So I was kind of hurt. And of course, you know, uh, uh, I told them very clearly that, you know, I'm not trying to get rich uh, by, uh, uh, from mass DOT because I'm a, I'm a guy that works hard. I worked hard all my life and I built this place up with all my uh, savings I had. So uh, being said that, I told them that, you know, just be fair with me. Just help me where I can at least maybe buy something on Route 9 and maybe just build a small shop like I have now and continue my, uh, my life and just do what I can. Thank so you. Was this your first offer? Do you, have you you've only received basically in a, uh, a that break? is the uh, uh, that is the first and the last and that is the whole thing. Uh, you know they are not uh, they are not saying they're saying that we're gonna give you whatever the price value is and I have no problem disclosing it. You know I, they're saying two two fifty two seventy uh, for the property that they're gonna they're gonna give us, but with that money there's nothing I can buy on Route Nine. There's no way. Uh, Every property on Route Nine is uh, is half a million dollars plus. Uh, even a did piece you, of land is five. Did you, Paul? Did you ask the assessors what what are you assessed at? So basically, they said we're gonna assess the property only. We do not care about the business. We not we do not care about what kind of business you're doing, or uh, you know what are you doing. Uh, we are just gonna pay you for the land that we're gonna take from you, and that's straight, nothing else. They have to pay you for the building also, the land and the building. Yeah, uh, to be, yeah, I guess they have to do that. But, you know, this is what they told me. They said that we're going to, we're going to give you the assessed value of the, the property and the assessed value is this much. And that's about it. But I did ask them that with that amount, what am I going to do and what can I do? And they said, well, you know, that is your problem. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, worry about that but i said but you are taking my livelihood from me you are closing me down completely i'm the only one on route nine that is being shut down and as far as business i think i'm running quite a good business with god's grace you know i try to do everything right and i i do the best i can for anybody that comes to me so at a public hearing that they held uh it was pre-covid so probably a year and a half yeah. years ago, yeah, and they had said that the uh, uh, the way that the process of takings usually works is they make a, an initial offer based on appraised value, and then they said that there would be some back and forth on the on that issue, and they said that in the end, if somebody was to go to court and challenge it, that typically they were paying I forget what it was six or seven times appraised value by time things were, were sorted out. So mm -hmm. from what? Not, <laughs> I, I wish that was true, but not for me. I mean, for me, it is one, one shot and that's it. They, they well, said, this is what you're getting and there's no, uh, there's no other questions to be raised. And yeah, if you want to go to the court, uh, go, ahead. Uh, go ahead. And you know, you're know you going to be in the court for three, four, five years. And then we'll figure out what happens after that. But uh, there is no back and forth. I mean, they are very uh, straight up with me. They're saying, this is what you're going to get. And we don't care about the business. We don't care about you. We don't care about anything. We want the property and we're going to take it one way or the other. I mean, you don't give it to us. We're going to come with a bulldozer and we're going to bulldoze it. Well, right in front of you. The issue is, yeah, it may take three, four or five years in court to sort out. But in the meantime, yeah. you know, they're trying to put in a lane through your parking lot. So they're going to yeah. come to a conclusion one way or another, sooner than three, four, five years. Exactly. Yeah. See, my my point to them was, with all respect, I told them very, very clearly that I just want you to just help me enough that I can move on with my life. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, I don't want, you know, a certain amount of money that, you know, I can put in my pocket and walk away. I don't want to do that. I love my work. 
I love what I'm doing and I want to continue that. I'm not that old yet. And I, hopefully I can continue next 20 years if, I, if I'm alive and I'm, I'm going to try to do that. But that is the only thing I, I told them that, you know, I cannot, yeah, go to the court. Yeah, but, you know, who got time to go to court and who's going to wait for four years, five years by the time I'll be totally destroyed uh, because I would not have no business and basically I cannot do anything. I need something, uh, I need something to happen before the project starts so then I can move on. I know, okay, hey, you know what? This is what I'm getting. Uh, okay, I'm going to get this piece of land and then talk to the town of Hadley and see what I can do and maybe build a two-way shop there and uh, continue my, uh, my business. So what do you have a written final offer? Is it in writing? Yeah, they sent me a letter in writing. Um, um, we have submitted. To- and we did submit that letter and all the... People. Paperwork of uh, the town, just just for the information. Okay. Um, so, well, who did you submit it to? The assessors. Um, I think we gave it to uh, the Carolyn. Carolyn. It's, Carolyn? it's Carolyn. on Board Docs Choice. Oh, okay. I didn't see it when I looked at Board Docs the other day, so I I'll, I'd have to go back and look at it. And excuse me, David. Oh. Can I just um. Can I just ask a question of Paul? Paul, yes, you, you also informed me that you had spoken with Representative Carey. And so part of that information that you got is from the correspondences, or it's exactly what he sent Representative Carey. And I did speak with Representative Carey last week we met, and he yes, was ma'am. scheduled to have a meeting with Mass Dot to talk about your issue. I have not heard back from him yet. I don't, have you? No, Excuse ma'am. Okay. I, I haven't heard. I just I just got uh, I think two emails from from his aide that they are working on it. They're talking to Mass DOT, and then of course when I when I saw you, uh, you were also saying, and no no answers yet from uh, Mass okay. DOT. I will follow up with that. I, I thank I you very much. With Senator um, Comerford as well, uh, her staff on Friday for another matter, and I'll, I'll bring it up again at that point as well. I thank you very much, ma'am. I thank you all the all the support and all the the help you guys are giving giving me. And uh, my my concern only is, uh, I'm a family man, and I have I have you know uh, I have to keep my family up. And what I'm doing is I just want to continue that. And I just I just need some help that somebody can help me to just continue my business. Yeah, I I, I think I can say that I'm sure the entire board is behind you and, and Carolyn as well and, and wanting you to be able to continue operating in Hadley and making a living. Um, I, I will say, I think that you should probably pursue this in, you know, kind of two pathways. Um, I would start reaching out uh, to lawyers and seeing what your options are though, uh, because with just like with us dealing with mass DOT, like Joyce said, it's their way or the highway. Yes. <laughs> so there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no negotiation. There's, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, was, that was just what I wanted to tell them. This is what we've been going through since they finished phase two of Route 9. With the water project, it's going to be between 800000 and a $1 million in water work that needs to be done under the road that the state doesn't want to help us with at all. Never mind the sewer line. It's all part of the infrastructure that needs to be done before the road's done. Yep. The state has no intention of helping us with the underground work at all. Although they have programs, Roads 101, 102, 103, on and on and on, where they give you funding and you need to get the work done under the road before you resurface it. But the, their rules do not apply to themselves. Right. You sure had something? Yeah, um, just to my knowledge, including Paul, um, I know of four businesses total that don't have a sign. A si- they don't have signed agreements with Mass DOT. Um, I know two of them haven't seen agreements with, from Mass DOT recently. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Who, who's speaking? It's Kishore. Okay, thank you, Kishore. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, we don't have a signed, I mean, I could speak for ourselves. I know we don't have a signed agreement right now. Okay. 
Have they been fair with you, Kishore? I haven't seen anything. I have to go back and look at our paperwork. Um, last I really heard from them is probably sometime last year around this time. Um, I, I, you know, with COVID, um, we kind of, I think everything took a bath burger. So I haven't seen anything recently. Okay. Um, Carolyn, can we, or Kishore, could you get with Carolyn and maybe provide your info and the other businesses that don't have signed agreements at this point? Yeah. And uh, maybe we can follow up with MassDOT and see what's happening with those because okay. they're, they're yeah. moving ahead, you know, full steam here and uh, telling us everything's great. And obviously that's not the case. Yeah. I'll, and I'll, I'll double check with, you know, on my side of my family to make sure we didn't receive anything and no one's told me, but, um, but I, I, I know I've just, I just talked to two people and they don't have signed agreements right now. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Keep us informed, please. Yep. No problem. Amy. Yeah. As far as just uh, to, ready, to to go on piggyback on what you said, David, it, we the bank had a lot of trouble with Mass DOT. We had a, we had big fight going on for a while. It wasn't until our we had to get the bank's attorneys involved um, it, that they would even work with us a little bit. So, and as far as I know, we don't have we weren't offered anything. Yeah, I, I think it's still it's still pending. And they had told us that they weren't gonna put any structure in front of our building. So even though there's a bus stop, there'll be no structure. Uh, we were told of some changes that they, that they did comply with because of our bank's attorney got involved, but it was a big fight. Um, so, um, and I don't necessarily trust because I don't necessarily know if it's in writing, trust that they are, are doing what they said they're gonna do. Um, but, um, Paul might have to get an attorney involved because that's the only way we got through. Okay. Um, Paul, uh, get in touch with me this, this week at some point. I'm happy to chat more and we'll see what we can do to, to help out. So. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. I thank you. And I do have, I do have my attorney also right now on, on Zoom. Mm -hmm. His name is Don Ellison. He's actually on Zoom right now. And he's doing his best. Uh, he's there, actually. He could probably talk. I, this. I, I can, I mean, I, again, this is Don Allison. I can speak to some of the particularities of Paul's case, which a lot of other people don't have. Because Paul's lot is so small, the amount that they need for the widening of Route 9 makes his whole lot unusable gone so they are taking his lot not you're not arguing over the value of four feet of frontage you're 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 dealing with the value of the lot and they have and, and unfortunately it shuts down the business but i think as you know dealing with mass dot is dealing with mass dot they are doing a taking of the lot they don't have to come to a signed agreement they file a piece of paper and take your property. You have three, you don't even have, they don't have to even go to court. They just file it in the registry. You have three years to fight with them about the value of the property, but they're only looking at appraised value of the lot with the building on it. You're correct. What is that worth? Uh -huh. um, and, and Paul and I looked at whether or not their appraisal, forget the appraisal of the business, the appraisal of the building and the lot was, was a fair appraisal. And we came to the conclusion that our appraiser would come up with the same value if that's all we were looking at was the lot and the building. The problem is he is the only one on Route 9 that they are shutting his business down. That is the fundamental problem. That's what we're dealing with. They are literally shutting his business down because he can't access his building with the little bit of land that he'll have left in front of his building when they take what they need to take for Route 9. Mm -hmm. And that's Here's what that. makes his property a unique property where you're not fighting with them over the value of a four-foot strip of land 
running on your front yard. You're, you're dealing with a complete taking. Right. And we are informed he's the only one they're doing a complete taking of. Yeah, that is correct. So it makes his situation very, very unique. And there really isn't room. I mean, you have three years to argue about the value, but they're not even going to consider the value of the business. They don't even want to hear about the value of the business. They will pay to move you, but they will not give you the value of the business that you've shut down. That's the fundamental problem. Well, let's uh, we'll keep working on this and um, you know, with uh, Senator Comerford and representative Kerry, and then we'll do what we can with mass DOT. So um, let's uh, connect sometime this week and we'll follow up on this. Okay, Paul. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks. And uh, hopefully we can find a solution that's better than what they're offering you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. We'll keep going on. Uh, budget discussion with Finance Committee, number 5.3 on the agenda. Amy, uh, is there anything you wanted to cover tonight about the budget so far? So uh, we met um, last week and what we're going, we uh, all we did was really go over the um, make appointments. So we have five scheduled appointments uh, for um, April. Uh, and we're meeting on 4-6 um, to discuss pretty much with the education, uh, police, fire, inspectors. Um, we'll be talking to them on 4-22. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 4-12. So April 12th, we'll be discussing with the Board of Health, Council on Aging, Veterans Services. We have a whole list, library, park and rec, all those. Um, on 4 21, we'll be doing all of general government. On 422, we'll be talking with public works and anything left such as OPEB uh, debt, things like that. On 427, our plan is to meet and have our vote, um, vote any recommendations. And then on 428, the next day, we will present to you what our recommendations are. So, um, We've been given um, the, the basically what it would be at level funded and level services. Um, so um, we are looking at that. I don't think it's a, um, a flat thing that we could say that, you know, so we're going to be presenting you with something. Um, I, I do know one of the big, big, big items are uh, is employees. Um, I have to say just on not um, on the whole finance, but just on at least my what my vote would be is is basically unless we could come to something more with um, you, the unions, I can't see us not supporting our non-union employees somewhat in some way. I just feel like that is to give the non-union employees nothing and but yet to but yet we'll give the union employees, what is in their contract, that's just not fair. So unless we could come across the board and do something flat as and negotiate with unions at this point, I think we need to support to support our employees. So I do agree with the presentations that have been coming across and supporting employees. But um, as far as all the different line items, we want our basic thing is we're gonna go over them we're going to listen to all the uh, budget and um, we'll just, we want to keep it as low as possible because, you know, we want to, you know, show that we put our best effort into our taxpayers, that we could keep this as low as possible. I don't want to see it go up like crazy, but, um, you know, we have to, we still have to run the, um, and, and support our employees. We have really good employees and we have to support them. So, We'll do the best we can and we'll give you something that we feel is fair. And if for some reason um, one of the departments disagrees with our recommendations, then at that point we're going to tell you that too. And then they would be able to present to you why they feel that it should be something different. Okay. Amy, we never said that we would. I feel that, and I think I can speak for the whole board, that we are uh, wanting to be equitable between all of our employees, uh, whether they are union or non-union. And that's never been 
uh, an issue whatsoever. So uh, I, I, for one, and I think I can speak for the others that, you know, some of the others that we are in agreement with that. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, I think the, where I was getting with that is the level um, funded doesn't account for some of that one, you know, the COLA. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm in the middle somewhere. I want to keep things down, but at the same time, there's no way I, I would want to not do something for the employees. After this last year we had? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they've all deserved something for what we've been through. Absolutely. Amy. Yeah. If we if we look at the level funding and a two percent tax increase, then everybody would be in somewhere between one and two percent anyway. Well, it, 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 that could be, John. I mean, because there are other light items such as OPEB we need to discuss and things like that. But um, there's also a lot of increases that we have, no matter what we have to adjust, which affects it, such as, um, you know, heating costs are up or something such as, um, oh, like retirement or, or, um, you know, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's certain costs that we can't get around. I would say that too, just in general, the world, the country seems like it's getting more, things are getting more expensive. Prices are going up on things. So I think it's going to be really hard to not have a tax increase or not have something just based on what things are going to cost the town looking forward. So um, it's hard yeah. not to change with the time. Yeah, I, Amy, um, my understanding is that even if we level fund, and I'm not saying we're going to or not, but um, even if we went that direction, we would still have to have some degree of tax increase because of the fact that we subsidized it last year uh, from stabilization, correct? So there's, there's pretty much no way around that. I agree. Okay. Yep. And now, like I said before, I'm not ever going to vote for a 7% increase like was mentioned on this call a few weeks ago, but um, uh, there's, there's unfortunately going to have to be some increase. Hey, next thing we're going to need is, is a tax work off program for the working man at the rate we're going. We're, <laughs> we're exceeding our, our expenditures here. You know, it, it just, it's not working out. Somewhere this has to stop. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, we have to remember too, John, we have the lowest taxes in Hampshire County. You know, if you look at dollars per valuation. So, I mean, it's hard. I agree. I mean, I don't want to vote for a tax increase just like David is saying, but we have to pay for the town's functioning somehow. So it's, it's I, challenging. I know, Christian, and you, you could never understand this. What I'm saying is if we level fund and take care of the help with a, say, a 2% or a 1.5% increase, you're still covering all those costs. We're not getting any thrills and frills out of it, but we're paying the bills and we're moving ahead a little bit. Depending on the revenue sources we've got coming in, depending on what comes in from the federal and the state, well, these are still all unknowns, you know? But we still have to put money back in the money we borrowed from the town, from the stabilization fund. And, and that's a serious issue. And we're also going to have to, not necessarily this year, but start putting money back in OPEC. Uh, I understand. We're, on a sec we're in the second year of this pandemic, really. And there's people out of work. There's people can't afford their rent. There's people that can't afford their taxes. There's people that can't afford automobiles right now. I mean, it, it's, it's getting pretty bad out there. And everybody's ignoring the facts. Well, I have uh, lots of faith in the finance committee. They did a great job last year with uh, squeezing out every penny they possibly could. So um, you said you'll bring our, your recommendation to us on April 28th. Is that what it was? That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So, so all, all in all, all of us, every one of us has to keep an open mind and see what we need to do to make it equitable for everybody, um, whether it be taxes or whatever, 
um, and just all work together and see what we can do. We gave everybody a break last year. Uh, according to Sue Golowski, uh, nobody reneged on paying their taxes or anything else last year. So we were in good shape in that area. Um, let's hope that we can continue with that for this year, but always keep that in mind so that we can still work together and see what we need to do. Okay. Well, thank you, Amy. And I know it's a ton of work, so better you than me. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Thanks, Finance Committee. Appreciate it. Indeed. Right. Thank you, Finance. Uh, do you want us to put you on the agenda for meetings in between now and April 28th? So you can just, uh, you know, have kind of have a standing agenda item so you can give us an update or? That would be fine. I come to these anyways, just to listen in. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, Christian, go ahead. Uh, just while Amy is on the call, I was going to mention this at a certain point. I didn't know when, but it seems like a good time. It's just the capital committee and just um, populating that with a select board member, uh, you know, going forward for this round. Typically, that's something that gets read off quite, quite a bit at a town meeting. So I don't know if there's another member of the select board or if you want to wait um, when there's new a new person on the board to select somebody to be on that committee. I'm happy to uh, continue to be on the committee for this year since it's a new town administrator and new person on that committee. Um, but I know Amy is on it as well. So I figured right now is a good time to kind of talk about it to see if there's any transition that wants to be made onto that capital committee. I'm okay with you staying on there if you are, are willing to do it since you kind of know what's been happening in the past and then we can always make that change after the election if you want to uh step off or whatever yeah i mean i can do it's probably i'm thinking it'll probably be two meetings before town meeting and um that's no problem for me just i don't know what to do at town meeting when it comes to the capital articles who would present that you know um carolyn is that acceptable to, do you know to have a non i'm sure it is a non-select board person uh, read, uh, read the articles? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Typically it's the finance committee who submits to, who presents the budget and the capital committee submits the capital. So, but what, however happily would like to do it. Are you okay with doing that Christian? That yeah, time? yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Can, can we make Christian the liaison to capital committee for a year beyond his term? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I had two meetings in my mind. <laughs> helping with keeping it going. And helping with the transition, I think it would be great, Christian. I yeah. really appreciate offering. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. So um, I would like to kind of stay on the board, but I'm just too busy. So I need to <laughs> control my life. But uh, as soon as it gets back into control, I could uh, could do things. But right now, two meetings is no problem. So you got a business to take care of, Christian? <laughs> yeah, kids, business, you know, too much, too much. In there. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I, uh, I have to say, I know that Paul McCretzky is going to be very pleased to know that you're going to still be there and help out. He, <laughs> okay. he talked about it the other day and he said that, um, he said, well, if Christian's not there, who's going to be chair? And I said, <laughs> well, gee, Paul, I nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That was good, Amy. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just work with Carolyn to set up meetings and then just get, be in touch with you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Christian. Yep. All right. Thank you, Amy. All right. We'll keep moving here. Uh, 7.1 had leaf community or host community agreement. Uh, this is the final agreement that for their new location uh, on Route 9 for the second adult use marijuana license in Hadley. Anybody have any questions or concerns about this? Christian, you were you were on this initial negotiation, right? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm trying to think back on my memory. I was going to look at it real quick, just a couple things. But uh, I mean, I, I know that we were comfortable with it all then. Um, I unfortunately did not get a chance to review the latest one here, but... Um, I don't know whether any changes at all, Carolyn, do you know, or was it pretty much the same one? Other than the address? I think it's just the address. Jennifer, yeah. and Jennifer might know more. 
I thought when we had the meeting with them, they said there was going to be no 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 changes but the address. Yeah. The only thing I see is in the plot plan. Are they expanding the back end for more parking? Because what's showing is parking doesn't look sufficient for the traffic they're hoping to have. I can ask him that question. He's actually supposed to be on here, but I don't see him. Yeah, there's so, I mean, he, he's there's so many places around here right now. I don't know how in hell they're going to make business there between Amherst and all kind of centralizing between University Drive and here and over there by uh, uh, Meadow Street on, on North Amherst there. It's, it's quite concentrated to tell you the truth but you'll so be good try them all joyce huh you'll just have to try them all i i've never smoked a joke <laughs> right <there. laughs> I'm, a, I'm a virgin <laughs> i uh i'm not sure if that plot plan is taking in the gravel parking lot into account i know that when 50 50 was in that location they added a, a gravel parking area that, that's almost double the paved area. So I'm, I'm, yeah. guessing, I'm hoping that's also going to be. You might have an issue with the land taken also in front. So okay. I'm sure that uh, if Tommy's on, I see maybe in the planning board can work with them to, to get this uh, figured out. Is anybody here from Hadley? I thought they were going to be here. He, he emailed us back and said that he would be joining us this evening. He might not have been expecting it to be taken up so early. Okay. Shame, shame. Bill, I see your camera's on. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, we are awaiting the community agreement. That is a prerequisite for filing for site plan approval. So we haven't gotten to them yet. Um, my recollection is that's a fairly large lot. It may have some wetlands issues uh, to the south, but um, whatever might be taken for Route 9 should not affect the viability of the project in any way. Okay, and since it's still gotta go through the planning board, I think we'll be all right with the parking. Hand again, raise your hand again. Tommy? Yes, so as far as the uh, building, they're not gonna go outside of the envelope. The fire department and myself have done a site visit with them and they're planning on keeping everything in that same envelope for the building. Cooper. Get a motion. Motion to accept. Second. Okay. Right, motion by Joyce, second by Christian. Any further discussion? Jennifer? Roll we'll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. All right. Tommy, I'll call you tomorrow. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if they show up later, we can re-talk if they have any questions. Yes. I'll keep an eye out for them. All right. 7.2 COVID-19 update. Carolyn, do you want to um, update us on town hall and uh, what's happening there? Sure, I can. So the... If you recall, we uh, planned a hybrid type of reopening. So we are now into our, I think maybe our third week of um, having a receptionist and that's Teresa Frost. And she's been delightful to have downstairs in that cold little corridor, um, but we are seeing traffic. So that is nice. It's been very manageable. Um, I haven't heard any of any issues so far, um, but uh, we've also, uh, switch some offices so there's more traffic downstairs. I do think that um, Tommy and Dee Dee are enjoying my old office. And um, once, once I get my desk up here, it'll be really easy. I'm working on eight foot tables here, <laughs> six foot tables. Um, but the staff has been extremely cooperative. It's been a little chaotic. Um, a few of us are living out of boxes. So um, that has gone very well. And just to be clear, the uh, temp receptionist is paid for out of uh, federal grant funds. We did not break our hiring freeze. We did not hire a permanent employee. This is 100% paid for by federal government funds for COVID. 
And it's and it's temporary. And her role is to make sure that everyone um, self certifies that they don't have fever or symptoms of COVID. She directs them to the office that they're looking for and makes sure that there's not you know two or three people waiting outside of an office as well. And also, um, we had to get some extra furniture that was also Co uh, CARES Act eligible, as well as uh, we had money set aside from an article in the past to replace the counters. So there are uh, three counters that are, one new is being added into the building inspector's office and two are being replaced in the clerks and the cl uh, collectors. So did we only hire one person for the receptionist? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, that wasn't the person I saw on my email. So that's okay. I mean, no problem. Whoever you hire is fine, but that wasn't the person I had seen. Did the other person change their mind? Um, I think there was something happened. I think there was an issue and I'm not sure, not with her. I think it was personal. She, she wasn't able to do it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is no impact on your taxes here in Hadley. Do these <laughs> I've already gotten the emails. So, David, can you just tell everybody what the um, time openings are of Town Hall so people are aware of that again? I think it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine to noon for right now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then so uh, people. I'm and the Gazette did do a really good, nice article. Uh, I sent them a press release for the library, the COA, and the Town Hall. So I think that helped a lot. And we're going to slowly expand this hopefully if everything works well right Back i'll to keep them. reporting to you and i'll make recommendations um and but if you have any input please share them with me and i think the way it's set up right now most of this i think all of the staff are back uh yeah all of the staff are back and um i think everybody's comfortable right now uh, a lot of the staff have already been vaccinated so i think there's a comfort level that wasn't there you know a month ago Okay, sounds good. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'm going to jump down to 8.1 Gorse, Gorse or Gorsh letter. Um, Christian, you had worked with the DEI on revising uh, the letter. And did you want to say anything about this? Yeah, we put it together. And, and sorry, I, Amy texted me. I know she was busy at home. So maybe just give her a few minutes to jump on. Um, but yeah, I, you know, oops, I guess the, oh, the letter is right there. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, you know, just, I wanted to address Amy's concern about us uh, reaching out to employers in the area and that kind of thing. I think the direction I was taking with this letter is that them closing has an impact on our community because, you know, teachers in our school rely on this daycare, business owners rely on the daycare, all different things that trickles down as well as our residents. And what we're really trying to say is by you guys closing suddenly, especially, um, you know, that has an impact on our community and what can we do to help with, keeping the service going because it is important. It is valued by the community. It does build community. And by it closing is a big loss to our community as well as surrounding communities. So it's more, it's not really saying don't close. It's more saying we like what you do and what can we do to help you stay open is more the approach I was trying to take with the letter. And I don't know if Amy has anything to say. I would see that she's on now. So um, I don't... Yeah, I just agree with what Christian said, that it's reminding the university of um, how, what a quality service it is, which is why people love it so much and so many people use it from the community and why it's at full capacity and enrollment. And also reminding the university that, you know, we sh hopefully would have a symbiotic relationship with universities, not they take everything from the community and give nothing back. I mean, the community of South Hadley pays taxes and supports the fire department that covers Mount Holyoke. So it would be nice if universities would also give back to the communities that welcome them. You're done with this? Okay. So we just need a vote on this letter so that way it could be signed and sent off to Mount Holyoke. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, we're not condoning or not asking other businesses in town for us to 
support them or a daycare or us being responsible for daycare in Hadley. We're, we're a private entity as a, as a town. Um, this is a private college that is offering a service to um, our, our people that live here in town and people that live in South Hadley. So uh, whoever works at the college has the opportunity to use the daycare. I think just in supporting that, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think that we're actually asking uh, anything for us to go any further than that, but that we do support them opening their daycare and having it available to um, our town residents or the have whoever works at uh, Mount Holyoke. So I think, I think that's important for us to support that because it is important for people um, to get back to work at this time. I mean, we're now into, you know, now over a year, we already celebrated a year in COVID. Um, so it's very important to people to feel that they can now go back to work now that we're actually giving, um, uh, injections to teachers and everybody else that's involved. Uh, we're trying to, uh, move this forward all, with all of the, uh, uh, COVID vaccines. And, you know, this is important that we need to get back to a normal life. And, um, I think, I think it's important at this time to support this. So I'll make that motion. That was long-winded, wasn't it? <laughs> I can second. I can second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Christian. And I'll just say, yeah, I, I think it's time for the college to start uh, practicing what it preaches as far as, um, you know, helping people, helping the community, uh, getting working professionals, men and women that may have kids out there working versus, uh, you know, they're always kind of saying, well, we can't just focus on the bottom line. Well, that's exactly what they're doing here. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. Any other comments on this? John? You know, I, hear, not, I hear what uh, Amy said. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jane, good. I heard what Amy said. And having once been a business owner, I understand how it's hard for someone else to tell someone how to run their business. So I have mixed feelings about the town telling another business what to do. I'm going to support this tonight, but I, I have reservations about whether it's appropriate. John? Yeah, so that, that's what I was going to say. But, uh, you know, UMass over the past two or three years ha has actually helped Tom Hadley out with uh, arrow boards and signage and uh, this and that, a few little things here and there. And they, they've really been, the, communi the communication's been open up a lot in the last three years with the university and us, you know, because we're the abutting town here, so. All right, any other discussion? Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. Thank you. So uh, if we could have everyone go in at some point and sign this and, you know, over the weekend, I guess that would be fine. So we could get it sent off. David, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. You talked last time we discussed this issue about other towns potentially signing on. I know that several other towns have actually already expressed interest in signing on to what Hadley is doing, if had, you know, assuming it would, would pass. Uh, what, what are the thoughts of you guys on that? Are you comfortable with other towns select board signing on, or would you prefer that they issue their own separate? I mean, I think it's, you know, probably more powerful if it comes as a, no from multiple people or multiple towns, I should say. So if you need, um, you know, now that we've said yes to it, if you want a week or two to check with those other towns and then we can, I guess, add their names to, to the letter or I, I don't know. I don't know what's the best way to do it, Carolyn or Jennifer. What do you think? I think each town should sign, do a letter on their own. Um, if they feel that this is appropriate, then they can certainly join in and send a letter, I think, which is much more forceful than just signing on to what we have. I think it's important for the surrounding towns that would be affected by this um, service that's offered at Mount Holyoke to, to have that uh, sent to them. So I, I would approach each town and if this is what you would like, then 
you know, please join us and um, send your letter in um, and support us in doing this. Okay. I think we can, I I think it's more powerful to come independently from the towns, but I also think it's would have no problem sharing the letter we're sending with the towns if they want a sort of direction to take. Yes, I agree. All right. Well, then let's do that. Let's uh, we'll sign our letter, and then Amy, if you want to, feel free to share it with other towns, and then they can sign on if they choose. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. All right. Okay, move on to, see, we have uh, 7.3 River Bylaw Committee Rule Approval. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oops. Tommy, do you want to introduce this and explain <laughs> what we're being asked to do tonight? Oh, God. Yeah, so we, we met uh, two, three times, whatever it was, the, um, for the river RVs, and... Everything's good. Was good. Um, we came up with a permit so we can keep the safety issue, you know, on file. Anybody there? Um, kind of a simple permit um, was going to be a hundred per camper. It ended up being, you know, they were talking to the the residents and that they were willing two hundred. It's good for three years. Um, the only feedback we're getting now is the uh, conservation, um, which you'll probably hear now from the people. But as far as the permit itself. Um, they're good with the building part, the, the fire, the um, board of health on this. So you, the people here now are, are gonna be, we didn't know what the uh, conservation part, which is prior, was gonna, the expense would be. Okay, so uh, this $100 fee is, is it per camper or per site at this point? It, the proposal we were trying to do per site 100, and it ended up people, you know, only had one and they said it wasn't uh, fair that they would do the, you know, some people would have two. We tried to do just families and, and it was going to be legally, can you ask if, if it's family members per site? So pretty much the agreement was to do 100 per camper okay. every three years. And, you know, it's, so it's 33, um, ends up $33 per camper okay. a year. And then the question I had is, or mm. I've gotten from residents is, why do we need a permit for campers uh, that have been down there for you know 30 years with no permits at this point? So what's the purpose of the permit process? Let me answer that. It, it, it's um, the, the sa life safety with the whole thing. They, you know, it's, it's by right they were supposed to. The, the it's this all bases back to the um, the new uh, bylaw, which actually Mr. Dwyer will be explained better. Um, those should have gone through, should have been enforced at that time. They should have gone through ZBA and you could only have one at that time per lot. So the planning has, you know, board has actually eased up and allowed, unfortunately I'll have to be the one to, you know, go through all these permits and all and, and, and do it all. But now they can actually have more than one. And if they meet the criteria, the 2,500 square feet per camper and 25 feet, you know, in between. Um, and first have to go through a course conservation. Okay, so the process here, if I wanted to put a camper on a piece of land by the river, I would go to you for a file for my permit and then at, at also go to conservation. Is that all that's needed or how, how does it work? The first, day, the first step is conservation. Okay. Is this and, done by the landowner or by the person who has the trailer as a guest of the landowner? All by landowner. The letters when this is, if this is approved and, and, and the bylaw, you know, passes will, will go through right all landowners. So, David, can I put this in context? To, we're, I think we're chipping away at little pieces of it, but I think you really need the big picture. Sure. So prior to 1987, there was no zoning authorization for campers by the river. We adopted the um, uh, over, flood overlay district for the first time in 1987. And at that time we instituted, a, we put in a section that would allow campers by the river, but by special permit and one camper per lot. Uh, flash forward to now, um, the, the rules just weren't being enforced. 
but there is no grandfathering really because those aren't structures. So they don't really fall under the grandfathering provisions of the zoning bylaw. Um, in September of last year, the uh, uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation uh, Flood Hazard Management Program issued a new draft uh, flood, a floodplain, model floodplain bylaw. Uh, the, every community that has floodplain issues is supposed to have, uh, supposed to adopt a, a version of the new model bylaw by this season, spring 2021. So we're underway on that. The RV clause is a small part of the larger bylaw that we have been told we have to adopt to keep up uh, in conformance with FEMA regulations. The, from a zoning point of view, the, uh, the newest version of the bylaw is substantially less complex than the current version because we're not requiring a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. We're allowing the special permit to be issued directly by the building inspector in his capacity as the floodplain manager. And um, we're basically taking the planning board and the ZBA out of the permitting process. So from one end, we are making the permitting process a lot more streamlined. However, in the course of conversation, getting to this point and looking at a couple of different drafts, we became aware for the first time that there were other stakeholders along the river with other jurisdictions separate and apart from the zoning bylaw um, that had something to say about what people are doing along the river. And uh, foremost among those is the Conservation Commission between the Wetlands Protection Act and the Rivers Act. They basically have um, 200 feet of jurisdiction from the mean high watermark inland. And um, basically, as I understand it, and I won't speak for them, but as I understand it, they've had virtually no contact with any of the folks down along the river. Um, and whether they are there seasonally or full time, they are under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. That is separate and apart from the zoning bylaw. Um, and uh, there also are concerns, the Board of Health has some concern, has some input depending on how many units there may be on a particular lot. That's under the state sanitary code, again, separate and apart from the zoning bylaw. So uh, basically we're here because the river is popular, has become more popular. And um, as it has become more popular, um, you know, complaints have come in to Tom. Um, People are taking a second look at this. And I guess the long answer to your question, David, is the reason people are concerned about what's been going on there for so long is that it shouldn't have been going on for so long without regulatory oversight. And that has arrived. Okay. Now, um, it's, so we're taking the ZBA out, we're taking planning out, basically Tommy's going to issue a permit based on this, whatever criteria is established here. Um, are they still going to have to pay Board of Health for a permit or an inspection? Because I, I know the concern people have is the dollar amounts that's adding up. It sounds like everybody on the committee agreed to the $100 per camper fee without any objection, right? David, do you mind if I cut in here for a minute? Sure. All right. So John Michkowski, I was on the bylaw committee. So throughout our meetings, we, we kind of went back and forth on the, the monetary amount of what we're going to charge for fees. Unfortunately, we had two people from the CONCOM on our committee who weren't up front with us on the additional fees that they would be charging. 
So we were under the impression that it would just be a hundred dollars and maybe a, a small fee from, from Concom on this. Um, I've actually received a few emails from people with their applications. Some of these landowners are looking at $2,500 for application fees. That's just an application fee, not granting them a yes or a no. So that's our biggest concern now that unfortunately this other board was on here and not letting us know, you know, Hey, it's going to be this much to do the filing fees, um, the endangered species act and all this other stuff. It, 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 it was just kind of like a blindsided with this. $2,500. Yeah, Joyce, they, if you talk, there's a few people on this call right now that will say that it's going to cost them up to $2,500 to have campers on the property now because of what CONCOM is now pushing. Is that a one-time thing for forever once the, it's approved or for every three-year period they have to reapply? Mark, are you on the call? Can you answer that? You or Rob? I think I can answer that. I believe that once approved, you're approved. But if you change anything after you are approved, the changes have to be reviewed. And depending on how much you propose to change, you may reopen the process. So here's a perfect example. <clears throat> if the river changes, the bank erodes a little bit, you need to move your camper, there's a change. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be charged to do another assessment. Tommy, you had something? Yeah, the only thing is, is a lot of, a couple of the feedback I've gotten since, you know, the meeting is that if they're going to have eight or they want to eventually have eight, they're going for all eight, even though they may, as far as our permit, only, you know, do the four, but they're going to go through the conservation with the eight to cover themselves if the following year they want to add two. Um, so, as, you know, as far as that fee. Are you talking about years? No, it, it would be a three, it's a three year with our, you know, the actual permitting. Um, but if they go through conservation, they're going through their max at, at any point they're thinking of. So then it would just be the simple fact of adding, because I guess that's going to be their biggest hurdle is, is conservation. So then when they apply for it, as long as they meet Board of Health, fire and all, which, which um, will be streamlined through this permit, you know, they only have to do the four now, whereas they can, you know, have the other four. Like the one example was there was going to be eight. They're going to only pay for the four with a permit if the eight are approved through conservation. Are you talking about number of trailers or number of years? Number of RVs. Number of RVs. Yes. So, and what is the acreage if you're putting eight campers on somebody's property? I mean, that's a lot of. A lot of campers on one property. We have quite a few with, with that or more now. So that's why the, the, the first hurdle would be conservation, giving them permission. And then they'll have to meet the 2,500 square feet per camper and the 25 feet spacing between through, you know, our permitting process. Okay. Joyce, one of the things that we, we came to the 2,500 feet for uh -huh. was the state regulations and if you actually go on Google Earth right now, you can kind of see pictures of summertime where there are lots. There's, there's some areas that have 10 acres and they have five campers on it. Yeah, I, I actually, Johnny, I actually drove down there when all of this started. So I did go down and kind of cruise um, down on the, on the dike side, on the, on the right hand side. Um, just to see how many people had what kind of campers and where they were situated. And, you know, they, they have pretty much set up um, a good deal of like, uh, like a compound almost where they have four or five uh, campers on one lot per se. Um, and that's what I was looking at when I went down there just to see where they actually were situated. Of course, I didn't have uh, actually knowing where their boundaries were and what where they were and what they allowed. So, I mean, I don't have a problem with people that own property that put their own campers down there. I think, you know, we don't, we don't have, I don't have a problem with that. I think the problem is, is when we invite other people in 
and we have to uh, be aware of, um, and as you do, well, you've yeah. been on the committee to know uh, what uh, we are not polluting anything within the area of DEP and the river and those kind of things. So I think you all know that. I mean, that's what you've been working on. So that's yeah, my through, concern. Through the permit, you have to show proof that you're being sanitary, that you're having somebody certified to pump your septic tank or your outhouse just as you guys go camping up at Black Bear, I, I you know, I'm familiar yep. with, with where you go camping. You know how much it costs. You know. How do you know I'm up there, Johnny? <laughs> I stalk you all the time. I'm on Facebook. <laughs> no. So, so you know that you. Yeah. And it's not yeah. as crowded as a campground. It's. Yes. And it's family stuff. It's not the problems you have down at Mitch's Island with the campers who don't right care on the water. about the land. These yep. people live here. They own the property. And even if they have guests there. They're respectful. Yep. They clean yep. up their trash. They don't burn pallets with nails and stuff in them. It, their kids are walking around barefoot. You know, they want it to be a safe area. Yeah. Um, one of the things, one of the biggest problems is CONCOM is going through and, and naming all this stuff as structures. A camper is not a structure. If you look under mass laws and the definitions, yeah. a structure is like a flagpole. It's permanent. It's in there. A camper Correct. is movable, movable. And as you know, yep. you know how much campers cost. If yep. you put a camper by the river, you're watching the, the, the river levels. You're not going to let it just yesterday. It crested at 109. Right. It's, it, we don't even have campers in. And we still follow that on this whole group that, you know, is involved. Yep. We know the levels that the river needs to come, you know, come to to get our campers out. Yep. We're respectful of that. And we're respectful of our own property. I, I'm not having a problem with what you're doing through the permitting process. I'm having a process. I'm having a problem right now with CONCOM. Yeah. And, and what they're actually uh, requesting people to do, because I think it's, I think it's really out of whack right now. So that's where I'm coming from. I think that's a little bit unreasonable. I agree hundred percent. I think this hundred dollars, for three years is very reasonable. It combines yep. the uh, fire department's inspection, board of health as well, Tommy, right? Yeah, no, maybe. Tom? Yes, it does include board of health. Okay. If applicable. Okay, so board of health, fire department, and uh, zoning basically all under one. So I think that's very reasonable and should streamline that process. Uh, I do have a big issue with $2,500 just to put a camper on your land. As uh, Johnny mentioned, it's not a structure. It's a recreational vehicle. It's movable. Um, I could see if someone wanted to put a structure, then sure, CONCOM can do whatever they have to do. But I, I think at this point, I'd like to uh, set up an appointment with CONCOM to come talk to us at a future meeting because we, we appoint them uh, to the committee. Absolutely. And uh, there's got to be some ways that they can streamline this process because hitting them with every possible fee under the sun just because they can is, is not the way to do business. Can I, uh, can I speak for a second? Who was that? Uh, this is uh, Mark Britton. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. So one of our biggest problems right now is um, a bunch of us are all in um, – permit we've all filled out our applications and our notice of intents we've put advertisements um, that are going to be published in the newspaper we've sent letters to the abutters and now we're kind of like we don't know what we should be sending in for payments um, for these fees so <clears throat> i'll give you an example my property i have four campers on my property but i'm filing for a f uh, five spots um, and the reason being is if I have, you know, my sister that wants to come, if they end up buying a camper or, you know, somebody that wants to come for a weekend or something, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm by the books. So I'm filing for five campers. Right now, five campers, I'm filing for the state and the town. It's going to cost me $825 for the notice of intent. Um, I'm also at risk of having to file with the National Heritage Endangered Species Program. That's a $300 fee. Um, other fees, I'm, I'm sending certified mail out to the 100 foot of butters. Um, I'm sending everything to the state and to the town certified mail, which, you know, it's, 
it's five dollars here and there, but that really adds up. Uh, it it just it frustrates me. I was on a lot of the um, river bylaw committee uh, meetings, and it just frustrates me that we had two people from conservation on there, and they didn't disclose um, what what fees they were going to charge. They, they didn't even talk about it, and uh, we all we all talked about you know different different you know charges, and I think that hundred dollars per camper. Um, for three years is, is, is great. I mean, you can't go camping at a campground for, for uh, $33 and 33 cents a night, um, let alone for, for a whole year. So it's just, it's very frustrating. And, and we have a lot of money out right now, me and other property owners um, with news, newspaper publications and whatnot. And now we're kind of like in limbo. We don't know what to do. Where's, where's your property, Mark? My property, I'm at the end of Cemetery Road, number 93. Okay, you're way down at the end. I am, yes. Okay. Any further, you'd be in the river. Yeah, <laughs> I've been down there. I took a look down there last uh, fall just to see what was going on. Um, so I did cruise a little bit and see where the campers were. And, you know, some areas are very nice. They're upkept. You know, all the campers look great. Um, you know, and I think people have a right to use their property for whichever way they want to use it. Um, you know, concerning the guidelines that we set forward and they're all following DEP guidelines, especially since we've cleaned up the river and we want to keep it that way. Um, so let's uh, work. I want to, like uh, David said, is bring in ComCom and uh, let's, uh, let's get things straightened out here. Yeah, I mean, there, there, we may not have any wiggle room on some of the state fees, but as far as how these things are being interpreted as structures versus RVs, I mean, I'm sure that would make a difference in the, the amount of fees that are being charged. So maybe we can look at streamlining this process. I'm, I'm sure there's no way to avoid all the fees because it is Massachusetts after all. Um, but, um, you know, let's see what we can do. But as yeah, so David, uh, I agree. This is Rob Baranowski. If I could just... Um, yep of a moment. Uh, the problem is really, again, it's because you're filing a notice of intent, it's $165 per activity. What the commission has decided is each parking of an RV is a separate activity, which is the thing I found the most outrageous. So every camper that you're going to drive across the lawn and park is $165. And that's where it adds up really quick when you have eight campers times $165. When Again, to me, that's one activity. And I've gone through and I've read all the activities and what it means. And they're, they're talking about dredging, filling, building. You're parking a camper on the lawn. And that's where those fees add up. So even when you're talking about the fees, it's the interpretation of the activity that makes it really expensive. One of the, one of the things on this, David, is like you're at a baseball game and somebody hits a home run. They get a new baseball. Is that a new activity? That's the way ConCom is like playing this game. Right. Tommy. Yep. Well, I'd like to bring them in. I'm paying $3,000. I'll tell you all up front. That's what I pay to go to the beach. So I'm happy about that. So I understand camping is great. It's a family thing. And I have no problem with it. And I think if it's your property, we'll try to work with you. Tommy. Chief Spake and Abel actually just texted me. So this was not about making money. Um, we tried every, you know, like I said, every way to cut. It was all just the, the life safety and, you know, and make all that work. So we didn't know what that would be for conservation. I just want to make that clear. And this was, like I said, we tried to do it per lot. It just wouldn't, wouldn't work. It wasn't fair to everybody. Um, so that was what uh, Mike wanted me to just bring to everybody's attention. But, but Tommy, Tommy, 100%. The, the committee agrees with you and Mike. We, we thought this was the best thing for us as landowners and campers. You guys are doing the exact thing that we should be doing for life safety and for your inspection costs. Unfortunately, there was people on the committee that were not forthcoming with what additional fees would be. It had yeah. nothing to do with you guys. Okay. So well, if I could get a uh, motion. That, that was my only question was the the agreement that everybody has together right now really doesn't affect the board and our decision at this point. It's the conservation that we need to figure out where they're coming from. Well, let's rope, let's rope them in and see what's going on. Yep. 
let's uh, as far as this fee though, the hundred dollar fee that's coming from the inspections department. Um, we just need a motion for that fee. And then we're gonna, we'll set up a time with conservation um, probably at our next meeting, if we can pull it together and maybe get some clarification and uh, some, a better understanding of structures and, and the different activities that they're charging for, which seem a little outrageous. All right, so move. I make a motion. Uh, Joyce, second. Please, but do you want to second it, Jane? <laughs> okay. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Any further discussion on this? This is the $100 fee only. This is not all the conservation stuff. No? Okay, Jennifer? Roll, roll, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungla? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Thank you. Thank everybody on that committee, too, for putting your time in and helping the property owners and the campers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we all appreciate it. Hello? Yeah, I, I want to um, definitely second to that as well. Um, I just want to, I really appreciate um, the planning board, um, Bill, uh, Tommy in the building. Um, we've all worked great together um, and this has been awesome with them. I mean, we've all learned a lot of things with one another's working together. And then again, you know, this all came down to us this week, which was really disappointing. Um, and I'm glad that you guys, you know, that was our whole, one of our biggest complaints was they kept saying to us, well, it's kind of like a single family house. No, it's not. It's a, it's an RV. Just like you said, it's a rec recreational vehicle and it's not a structure. And that, and, and they just, I, I, I mean, it even says it. I mean, um, Rob has read everything and it's true. It's about the dredging and everything. So uh, thank you for um, bringing this up and having that conversation. Sure. All right. Thanks to everybody for showing up and well, we, one step closer to getting the process finished. We'll, we'll keep working on the rest. Um, all right, so we'll move on. Uh, let's do any announcements. We have an executive session tonight, but before we do that, if anybody has any announcements they would like to make. I do. I don't. You do. I do. Tomorrow, Carolyn's going to be interviewed by the uh, Hadley Matters, a senior center program. It will be uh, a video, it will be streamed live, and it will be available on YouTube afterwards, so you can get to know your town manager better, town administrator, excuse me. So you're saying it's streamed live, so no second take? So it's like live. this meeting. They're going to be recording it, but it's also on the Hadley table. So the pressure's on, she's got to get yeah. it right at the front. Of it. Hopefully I don't get fired. <laughs> Yeah, so do we do we start singing getting to know you getting to know all about you <laughs> that's great thank you carolyn for doing that absolutely two o'clock tomorrow afternoon david i do have a couple other announcements if that's okay yeah go ahead I'll, i'm just gonna i'm gonna take a few things out of my town report because we skipped over that but i there's a couple things i just wanted to highlight um, the Easter Parade is this Saturday from 11 to 2.30 that Parks and Rec is uh, hosting. Uh, Susan wanted me to let you know that excise bills are due tomorrow, April 1st. And a reminder that the annual town election is April 13th at the new Senior Center. Um, I also, up, uh, Jennifer uploaded uh, some updated uh, revenue reports and expense reports for the general fund and the enterprise funds for water and sewer. So I'll try to keep those so that you can see those on a regular basis. And um, I wanna skip some of this stuff, but uh, I just, I do wanna tell you that I did meet with Representative Carey, as I mentioned, to talk about uh, uh, Paul's exotic autos issue. But I also wanted to ask um, Representative Carey, that was my first um, conversation to help see if he could put a line item on the state budget for to help with the cost of the sewer lines that need to get replaced during the Route 9 widening project. Um, as you know, it's a perfect time to do this. It will save the town over a million dollars to do that, but there's about $800,000 that isn't covered that the town owns. Um, and I will be meeting with uh, 
uh, representatives from Senator Comerford's staff to request funding as well to get that support. Um, I did get a letter uh, to see if there was any projects that Hadley needed assistance with from Congressman uh, McGovern's office. So I did reply that we had bid doc ready documents that would be really easy to fund. So we'll mm -hmm. see how that comes out. Uh, North Hadley Village Hall, the RFPs are due on the 28th and the invitation for bid was uh, advertised today uh, for the fiber optic network phase two for all the public buildings in town. Mm -hmm. And um, a huge thank you to Mike Spake Nabel and Jennifer who wrestled with the attorney general's office uh, several times to get the right information to do this. So um, kudos to them. Um, and then finally, we're, I'll be working on the warrant um, and have a draft ready um, in the next week or two. So uh, you'll be getting that in one of your emails too. So just wanted to share that. Okay. I had a question about when the last day was someone could put something on the warrant. Well, you guys haven't closed it yet. So it, uh, we can talk where I have it maybe to close on the 7th. So hopefully we'll have the, the draft done because I still have to have legal review up, but they can, re they can start, they're going to review it after it's closed anyways, but we can always reopen it. So I just wanted to reiterate, if we close it in the next meeting, you can always reopen it. We have opened it and closed it for specific things in the past. So. Yep. It'll be your choice whether to open it or not once it's closed. Um. When, when you do talk to Joe uh, Comfort and uh, Carrie again, if you can find out about that uh, federal infrastructure money, if it is passed, because that's a five-year program that they have that I had sent to you, if, if you could see uh, if that's going to be open to everyone for infrastructure mm -hmm. or if it's going to be specific, like we run into problems all the time. You know what I'm talking about? Right, and there's... There's two uh, funding sources, one federal and one state for infrastructure. And that's why I'm meeting with all three of them to talk with them about it. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other announcements? I would just like to say happy Passover for this weekend and happy Easter to everybody. And I hope you have a good weekend. Jennifer? Uh, and just a reminder, candidates night for the Hadley Mothers Club is on April 5th. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yay. You text me. I didn't see it in time. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, was, I was, but I was going to let it go since they're going to end before they before y'all meet again. All right. Um, oh, question for you. When are we meeting again? I'm all confused. Next week. Yes, next Hold on. April 7th. Oh, wait. I, I was one ahead of you. Yep, April 7th. April 7th. We're doing three in a row. Well, it's budget time. Let me, I'll <laughs> clarify. Let, we're going to clarify that, whether we need the 7th and the 14th, but I'll let you know. Well, we have to do the 7th because Christian has to give his farewell speech on the 7th, and we can't jip him out of that. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely oh, not. So three in a row. <laughs> I'll fill it up with other items. I can prepare it right now. Hold on. Let me. <laughs> oh, I was I was looking to know whether or not we should thank Christian tonight for all of his services before if we weren't meeting on our next meeting. So you know, uh, so I'll, I'll save my speech for then, Christian. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I had, right. text, I had to text Jennifer actually and make sure that this wasn't my last meeting. I was like, I don't want to find out halfway through the meeting or at the end, like now it's your last one. <laughs> I, I, I am go. sure we'll have, we'll have information to, to add on to that. If we meet, it is budget season. I know Amy will have met uh, once before that. So. Yeah. Okay. We'll, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll see you next week. Town meeting is all set and confirmed for the 22nd. Correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. So executive session and Jennifer, just to confirm, we're going to stay on and kick everybody off, right? Yes. I, I, I think that y'all find that easier, correct? Yep, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> All right. The select board will enter into executive session per MGL chapter 30A, section 21A2, 2, 
uh, to discuss strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, town treasurer. So I need a motion, please. So moved. Uh, all right, and a second? Second. Okay, a motion by Joyce, second by Christian. And as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley and we will not reconvene in open session. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Devin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Thank you. Right, good night, everybody. See you on the 7th. Good night.